Hey everyone, it's still turkey day. Let's get some software in this tiny book. I have my meter out. My meter is out for a reason. Mainly because I have not plugged a battery into this whoop yet. And we did do some soldering. This is just not simply plug and play like a lot of the tiny whoops are. So we want to make sure that I didn't make a mistake anywhere. Got my meter set to continuity. Essentially, when you have this selected, when you touch the leads together, it will beep. If you take them and touch the leads to the battery connector, if they beep, you have a short. That means you need to take your whoop apart and figure out where the problem is. In this case, it looks like we're good. No beep whatsoever. I do not believe there's a short. However, if you're bad at building, guess what? You can make a smoke stopper for a tiny one. Works just like its big brother. This is just simply a 12 volt automotive bulb and it will prevent this thing from burning up if I have any problems. So before I apply any power whatsoever, just in case, uh, some of you saw my 2S brushless build. And this is exactly why this thing exists. So I'm gonna take my battery and plug it in. And hallelujah. The Wilt boots, I have LEDs, no illumination on the light bulb. So I'm pretty confident going forward at this point that I can connect the battery directly to the whoop and we should have no problems. I like to do this check before I even connect it to USB. Uh, keep this in mind. These batteries are 3.7, 3.8 volts, let's say. You charge them up, you get about 4.2, 4.35, depending on what you're running. This has way less voltage than what's coming out of your USB cable. Typically your USB cable is about five and a half volts. So if this can fry it, guess what? This can too. A lot of times the USB will backfeed other components of the board. And that's exactly why I tested it with the smoke stopper first. But again, I'm confident, no light, no smoke. I think we're good. If you remember, when we put our frame together, the reason we selected this as the front, because now it's very easy to plug in my USB. No problems at all. All right, so we've got the whoop plugged in for the first time. Now it looks like COM20. Let's connect up. I've done enough of these where I know the configuration and I really don't care what's going on here at this point because I've done a few. I'm gonna go straight to my CLI and I'm gonna type in version. Holy smokes, this one's actually on Betaflight version 3.2. Ah, last board I got, I believe was on 316, 317. Uh, it looks like we've got some new software going in there. Well, that's cool. And I'm gonna show you why this matters. So based on your Betaflight version, we can put this board in a bootloader mode without having to push the button. If you're on Betaflight 317 or previous, you type in DFU, enter. Oh, what do you know, unknown command. Well, that's because we're on Betaflight 3.2. So Betaflight 3.2 and beyond, you just simply type in BL. BL is short for bootloader mode. BL, enter. So now we get booted out. Now I'm gonna take my Impulse RC driver fixer. Every time you get a new board, you always have to install the DFU driver for it. I don't know why that is, it's just kind of how things work. So this should correct the driver issue here. Ah, we has success. And you see we get this warning. Google Chrome was running while fixing drivers. Blah, 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 blah. Basically what we have to do is close our Betaflight configurator 
and reopen it in order to see our board in DFU mode. So I'm gonna say okay, close out of that, and kill my beta flights. I'm gonna open beta flight configurator back up, and hey, look at that, DFU, no big deal. Go over to firmware flasher, I'm gonna pick my board. In this case, we are going to pick beta flight F3. I'm gonna choose 321 uh, pretty much because this is what all my other quads are on right now. I wanna keep the software consistent. Um, and yeah, so that's why I'm gonna pick that for the moment. I'm gonna click load firmware online. We're gonna have some details going here. Blah, 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 fixes, yup, fantastic, yada, 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 all kinds of stuff. Okay, loaded online firmware. I'm gonna flash it. Erase the board. Now we're flashing the firmware. Hey, we has success. And our CARM port has come back. However, before I connect with Betaflight again, I'm gonna power cycle the board. I'm just gonna unplug the USB and plug her right back in. Our COM port is back. I'm gonna say connect. Because I've done a few of these, I actually have a dump. I'm gonna paste it, hit enter. There we go. Okay, it's done. Once it's taken the dump, I'm gonna type save. Enter. Our board's gonna reboot. We connected right back up, and now we're gonna have everything configured exactly how we need it. So see on the ports tab, serial RX is configured. I go into my configuration. Everything in here is pre-configured. Brush motor, custom PWM speed, 16,000. I just like to turn on motor stop. Don't ask me why, it really doesn't do anything with air mode. Uh, I also like to always disarm the motors regardless. That's kind of cool. I just flick the switch, no more spinning motors. I'm running 8K4K loop. As you can see, I am just a little under 30% of my CPU load. I'm pretty comfortable with that. You can put in a custom name. I'm just gonna go with regular old beta FPV. I have a few of these boards, they're all set up the same. I do have the FR Sky version, so serial based receiver, S bus. There's not a heck of a lot of stuff in here that we need. Honestly, we don't need telemetry. Uh, OSD, absolutely. And hey, how about a dynamic filter on a tiny whoop? You guys ever try that one before? You might want to. Let's jump over our PIDs tab. Here's my personal setup and configuration that I like on the Tiny Whoops with the Beta FPV board. Uh, here's all my PIDs. Yeah, I have 123. Uh, some people have these a little higher, but this is kind of what I like. Um, I've also actually turned down my D gains, and I've done this because with dynamic filtering and PT1 turned on, I've actually been burning up some motors. So I reduced both of these by five and it seemed to correct this issue. Other than that, everything over here is really personal preference. Uh, standard 1.0 RC rate, 1.2 on yaw, you'd like a nice sharp turning craft. Uh, super rates, blah, blah, blah. And you can see my curve. Let's jump over to the filters. Like I said, PT1. I have disabled both gyro notch filters. Uh, but in this case, I am leaving the D-term enabled. This is risky, even with brushless motors. Uh, you need a well 
Tycoon Smooth Flying Craft. Uh, and with this disabled, a broken prop can actually smoke a motor. So I kind of play it safe and I usually leave the D-term notch filter enabled in most cases. Uh, receiver, tab, if you're flying the Tranis, TAER, one, two, three, four, pretty standard. Uh, I set my low stick threshold to 150. Uh, the new beta flight high threshold is at 1900, whatever, that's their thing. I'm not going to get into this anymore. I haven't found my radio yet. Modes, again, personal preference. I have arm switch. I do leave angle and horizon mode still enabled, even though I prefer to fly in Uh Anti-gravity turned on. I set up a fail safe, so, you know, just in case. Also air mode on a switch. That's just kind of how I like to do it. And that's about it on this. I don't think there's really anything else to go through other than the OSD. Uh, OSD, personal preference. I like it. Pretty simple. Uh, just a few things turned on. Battery voltage, crosshairs, timer 2, fly mode, throttle possession. I wish I could get RSSI out of this board. If any of you guys have tips on RSSI, please let me know. I'd love to get that enabled on this. Ah, uh, but I think that's about it. Uh, how about we break in the motors? Yeah, I think we need to break in the motors. I'm gonna jump to the motors tab. We have our warning of death. I understand the risks. Propellers are removed. Enable motor control. Ah, uh, here's the thing. On the tiny whoop, well, they're not incredibly dangerous. Um, I have been hurt by a spinning prop on a tiny whoop. I got a pretty good blood blister once, believe it or not. Uh, but we're gonna be careful when we break in the motors. So just, come on, don't be an idiot. If you try to do this, have some common sense. Don't stick your fingers in spinning props. It is a tiny whoop. You should be safe, but come on, use your brain. All right, I got the old iPhone out. I have a timer set for four minutes. I am plugging in the battery. Letting the whoop boop. I'm going to enable motor control. Tap the master switch. I'm gonna start clicking them up to about, oh, let's go with about 1060. And I'm gonna start my timer for four minutes. I'm gonna let this count down and I'm gonna let the motor spin. Uh, once the timer is up, I'm gonna let it sit for a period of time, five, 10 minutes maybe, we wanna let the motors cool down. And I'm gonna repeat this procedure again. I'm gonna run them for four minutes, I'm gonna let them cool down. And since I really like these newbie drone motors, I think I'm gonna do this Eh, about three or four times, make sure they're well broken in before I actually fly this loop. Uh, I'm gonna let the timer run, I'm gonna let them cool down, I'm gonna complete this procedure, and I'm gonna check back with you guys in a minute. Okay, now my motors are broken in. I cycled them four times at about 1060. Uh, ran them for four minutes, let them thoroughly cool down. You know, again, give them about 10 minutes in between, let them cool, idle them for four minutes, let them cool, idle them for four minutes. Uh, that procedure is complete. Now I'm ready to bind this up to my radio. Just normal standing binding procedures. If any of you have a Tyrannus, I expect you know how to do this by now, so I'm not really gonna get into any details. Uh, radio is in bind mode. Flip this bugger upside down. Get a pokey thing and my battery ready.
push the button. Plug it in. Well, should be bound. Let's see if it arms. Hey, hey! Okay, whoop is working. I'm ready to go fly this guy, stuff myself with some turkey, and pass out. I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.